Hey, you know something I realized? Almost no one has done a FNAF World Challenge before. Oh, well I guess there have been a few. Hang on, every single one of these challenges is for beaten news and upgrades. Hmm, aha. Let's do this. That's right, today I'm going to be beating Fire at Freddy's World without any upgrades. So you may be asking, what counts as an upgrade? Well, let me tell you. Any chips, bites, or other accessories that boost your team in any way is not allowed. I also won't be using any Halloween characters because that would make this challenge way too f***ing easy. And, to just to make me hate my life that much more, I have to beat the game on hard mode. I mean, how hard could this challenge actually be? Well, sh So, for those who have no idea what FNAF World actually is, because you only follow the main set of games, let me explain. Final the Freddy's World is a very different game to the previous ones. Instead of being a horror game, Freddy and his friends have become Pokemon who have to glitch through the third dimension to beat Scott. And no, I'm not joking. That's the plot. So to explain the game and how it works, as well as explain this challenge as easily as possible, I'm going to divide this video into four sections. The levels 1, 2, 3, levels 4 through 6, the boss keys, and the final boss. If this doesn't make sense, you'll see soon. So, let's dive straight in. Don't forget to subscribe, or Freddy will never return to his former glory. I wanna be the very best. Alright, so for starters, let's quickly explain what the goal is. We have to find glitch objects around the map that allow us to walk between boundaries of the game, and press different buttons that allow us to access new sections. Each section has different enemies, bosses, and of course, loot, which means absolutely nothing to us. While we complete these tasks, we will be randomly thrown into battles with randomly different enemies, which is, you know, based on like RPG games, and these fights were way more difficult than I thought they would be. You see, the starting teams of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Toy Freddy, Toy Bonnie, Toy Chica, and Mangle completely suck ass, and I can't kill anyone even if I tried. So to start the challenge, I found myself getting game overs left, right, and center. But trust me when I tell you, you haven't seen nothing yet. Also, because of how many game overs I will be getting, I'm going to tally up all the game overs and reveal to you how many times I die at the end. So, make sure to watch until the end to see the number. So anyways, at this stage of the game, I was completely screwed. We could barely take on the first boss open to us, and were completely outclassed in any fight besides, like, the basic plants. So, what do we even do at this point? Well, there's two things we can do. We can level up, which gives us more health and let us attacks do more damage. Or, we can wait for... Easy. Not even a question. Ooh. Oh, you actually have a... Now, in Final Fantasy Freddy's World, you have 48 characters you can attain. Eight of these are excluded since they are gods and can one-shot anything. And we can also get them at the very start of the game, I wish. But there are 32 other characters that we can get throughout our playthrough. Which are all stronger than our starting team. So strong, in fact, I couldn't even get Phantom Chica at the start. Big bummer. So at this point, it becomes a grind of levels. Leveling up our characters is going to be the only way to deal enough damage to beat anything. The fact that Mangle was somehow our strongest character was concerning. So how did I actually decide to level up? Well, by getting through the game as fast as possible. The first I could get is the Snowman before the next warp in level 3. So yeah, we weren't making any progress. I even caught Phantom Chica again and she still beat us. Things were not looking good at all. Without upgrades, we couldn't get any chips that would allow us to block certain attacks or just get stronger and faster. And the biggest issue, pretty much no chance to heal our characters. This turned combat into a marathon sprint to try and kill things before they even got a chance to. Which considering we didn't have any upgrades that would make us move much faster, became a massive issue. I was worried, but I don't ever give up. So I pressed on, bashing my head against the wall until... Uh, very hard. When I... Oh, thank you. Did it. We got JJ. Now granted, JJ is still pretty f***ing ass. But she does have one ability that would prove super useful throughout this entire challenge. Gentlemen, behold. Unscrew. Unscrew is arguably the most OP ability in the whole game. Well, at least for now. Unscrew gives us a 30% chance to just completely one-shot an enemy, which is absolutely huge. Now, before you get too excited, we are still getting pretty f for the time being. 30% may be decent against normal enemies, but Unscrew only has like a 2% chance against bosses, meaning that the chance that we roll it is pretty much unlikely. 
so we are still getting our asses beat by the snowman. However, it did mean that all of a sudden we could get characters. Now granted, the characters that we can get in this area are pretty shit. I mean, Phantom BB. Like, he's decent at this point in the game, but like, come on. All he provided were debuffs, meaning he could weaken enemies, which made it slightly easy for my teams to beat enemies, but what about that snowman? No luck. But, behold, Phantom Chica. Here for round three. Get fucked, idiot. Now, she sucks overall, but she is arguably the strongest Phantom character, having Toxic Bite, a damage inflictor, Sludge, a debuff that slows attacks, and Unscrew. Holy shit. Anyway, so with two Unscrew characters, we now have two chances every round to kill an enemy. So does that mean... Snowman? Come on. Yes, we had done it. So with that, we can leave this section and move on to the rest of the game. Hi. Hi. So for this section, all I pretty much did was speed run through, as there are no bosses. So I got all six areas of the game unlocked, and now came the first roadblock since the snowman. Brow boy. Now look, speed running through means that we are in a dangerous area with a pretty weak team. So at this point, we are on a character grind. Now how hard is a character grind? Well, pretty hard. The chance of getting a character is pretty slim, and even when we do get one, we have no choice of who we get. There is a chip that makes this process super quick, but you know, we can't use it. So that meant either unscrewing Brow Boy or waiting for some stronger characters. And well, this is where I got into a bit of a pickle. I could unscrew Brow Boy and get access to the harder characters, but then I would die too. Oh, well, that was easy. So after that flow could hit in this button, we bash our heads against Pork Patch until we kill him, get the key, where the true challenge begins. The Fitness Grand Pacer Test is a multi-stage... At this point of the game, we have now unlocked the ability to press the four buttons to open the gate to the final boss. However, behind three of these are bosses which are overpowered as f Basically, if you don't have a shield ability, they pretty quickly will wipe your entire team. So this means that in order to beat them, you need to unscrew, which is easier said than done, since by the time you get a chance to use it, your whole team is dead. So what is one man to do? Cry. Then character cry. This part of the run took f***ing forever. So how about I show it in a montage? Now, throughout all of this, a couple of additions to the crew would help drastically. Mainly, Endo 2 and Fredbear. These characters are pretty good, but each have one ability that really helps with the challenge. Endo 2 has Neon Wall, which allows us to live slightly longer, which is amazing. Although, if he gets hit, it's over. It just means we can't really get one shot by the bosses anymore, which is fantastic. Fredbear, I thought was useless when I got him at first, although he is kind of rare, but then I discovered the Mimic Ball. What does this do? It replicates your previous attack, which means double unscrew. Now we also got some more characters too, Withered Bonnie and Nightmare Foxy, which both have Unscrew 2, which is unscrew, but better. We also got Shadow Freddy, Phantom Foxy, and many others. So let's stack them all together and let's take on the bosses. Well, that took forever. So now we are on to the final boss, where the true challenge begins. 
So once again, we are back to bashing our heads against a wall. The security owl is kind of a pain, although not as bad as the bosses since with Neon Wall, we can at least block attacks until Endo 2 dies. The alarm attack is completely useless while Neon Wall is up, but the second it goes down our team is wiped. But the owl isn't the issue. It's this guy. Now Scott is an issue with upgrades, so without upgrades, we are fucked. So for starters, he does a stupid amount of damage and throws alarm around way more, but the worst thing is, is that he has fourth wall, the most overpowered ability in the whole game. It does a stupid amount of damage and yet ignores any defense. Not that we have any at all, so we died. Which means that we have to do the owl again. Every time you die to Scott, the owl respawns. So... Now here's where the real grind of the challenge began. I spent over four hours grinding this and I got nowhere. The only way that we were gonna have a chance to unscrew Scott was to get a character with gift boxes, an ability that can revive your team. However, without the fine characters chip, the chance of us fighting this character was low, like impossibly low. So is this it? Did we come all this way just to fail at the final stretch? Well, I'm not giving up that easily. I had spent nearly five hours at this point, and I wanted it to be worth it. So I set off for the grind of a lifetime. Holy shit, we had done it. Gift boxes. And thankfully, I got super lucky and got past the out on my next try, which left the final challenge, Scott. Bring it on, asshole. We had done it, and in the process confirmed that it is possible to beat Fire to Freddy's World without any upgrades. Also, this is the tally of how many game overs I got. What the f- Now this challenge was not fun at all, since it mainly involved RNG. Or more accurately titled, bash my head against the fucking wall for 9 hours straight. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe. I want to get to 50k by the end of the year, and I think we can do it. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.